Hi, welcome to Pencil Bank in our, our interview with Lagerkrant. Uh, my name is Marcus Almrud and I'm uh, I'm an analyst here at the bank. I have with me Jorgen Vig, who's CEO at Lagerkrant. Hi, Jorgen. Hello there. So you released your second quarter report this morning, a uh, very strong report, uh, quite good numbers. Uh, organic growth was at least to me uh, maybe surprisingly high, but we've seen that across the, I mean, in many companies during this earnings season. So 11% organic growth, uh, strong markets. It's the sixth quarter with a quite a high level. You saw a little bit of a dip in the in the first quarter, but but overall it's been high single digit or double digits for, for six quarters in a row. And at the same time, the market's worried. We're seeing leading indicators falling. So can you give us some color maybe if you're seeing certain segments which are worse than others, etc., or is it quite strong across the board? Yeah, well, it it is actually quite strong uh, across the board. Um, we, I think, we, with our group and the, the exposure we have, we are quite business to business focused, uh, and we are also um, working very much in niches. And that means that we are around in, 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 in very many different markets and, and we are along the way also becoming more and more international. So we also see exports picking up uh, and, and, we, and then, of course, we have some engines uh, in, in, the, in the group. Uh, EL, Elpress has always been an engine for us in, in, within the electrify division. Still continue to do it well, uh, and 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 then we have uh, another number of other uh, Tourmec is another uh, strong engine within the niche products division. The Vapor is another one within the the, the, the that division. So I think it is very broad based, and it's it's uh, uh, and and it's in many different markets, and 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 we're a bit uh, sort of not surprised, but but still uh, feel that that we have some strong concepts in our group. Our companies and and they're, it's uh, they're 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 winning in their their respective markets uh, in in quite a few instances really mm-hmm. that, that mm-hmm. looks good I think that I I think it's it's fair to not expect maybe this high level of organic growth if if the markets uh, start to deteriorate or we see some really slowdown or 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 significant downturn uh, but but still uh, set, seen over a, a a business cycle i still that feel that we have a lot of strong companies and they will they, they are well positioned and and that will that will be good for us going forward as well and just to be clear you have very little consumer exposure so so it's it's mainly business to business that you're you're exposed to right yes that's right yeah, and and still you have. I mean, you have a plan B. Uh, you're talking about it. If if a contingency plan, if we if we would go into a recession, uh, but I think you also said that you you've. I mean, you've basically not used it at all, which is also a sign of of the strength you're seeing. But talk a little bit about the contingency plan, how it works, how you're preparing for for a possible recession in in, in your subsidiaries. Yeah. I think it's important to understand about us that that we are. I mean, we are a very decentralized organization. So we have seven currently some seventy different profit centers, and when we talk about Plan Bs, or or it's not one plan, it's seventy plans. So each profit center have their own plan, and what we do is that we sort of uh, make a scenario uh, where we where we look at uh, what, what would happen if volumes fall ten percent or twenty percent or 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 really a plan B and a plan C according to the ten or twenty percent, and then we make a sort of a a plan around that. What would we do in order to cut cost? What would we do on the pricing side? What would we do on on facilities and 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 uh, and uh, all types of costs and all type of Initiatives. What would we do around working capital in order to to really uh, sort of uh, work with that as well? And, and those plans we make one uh, at each of the of the subsidiaries, but we we have not implemented them uh, more than maybe in a handful of instances. Uh, and and the, the planning is about to happen, so it's not like we have the plans ready either. We are about to start making those plans. So we we are late uh, uh, in the in the cycle, and we 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 uh, and we don't see uh, we don't see anything really strong deterioration uh, yet, just yet, and then therefore therefore I think it's important to 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 to, to, to I mean that's how we work with the Plan Bs really. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, if if we move tack a bit uh, to the other maybe main drivers of the of the top line, uh, M and A. So, 
it, it's a very high activity that you're running at the moment. And you added 24% to sales in the quarter loan from M&A. And you wrote in your in your opening remarks that, that you've increased the capacity in making acquisitions. And we, we've talked about it before as well. Uh, and, and you never kept this kind of pace before. So have you reached a new level? Should we expect further acceleration? Uh, or is it this targeted effort which is behind this? I think it has a lot to, uh, to do with with different circumstances as well. We, in the beginning of maybe a year ago or in the beginning of 2022, we felt that the market was very sort of fish and, and we felt that prices were were very, very high and and so forth. After since the yeah in the in the later part of the year and and due to the geopolitical crisis, and we think that that it's been more reasonable. And therefore, we have been more active than normally. We we have the intention of closing some five to eight deals, growing by some 15 to 20 percent per year through acquisitions or so, uh, and, and through acquisitions as well. But I think it's also important to highlight that we, we have the ambition to finance most of our acquisitions through our own generated cash flows. And, and therefore, I think that's, that is also to some extent limiting us to, to make even more acquisitions. Mm-hmm. We would like to be uh, uh, someone that takes good care of the companies that we work in an orderly, good fashion of what we're doing along the way. So I think that that is the pace you should expect from us. And that is basically a slightly lower pace than we've had in the last quarter. I think mm-hmm. the five acquisitions we made here are also the five we made to, to 2022. And that's uh, that's that's uh, so, so five to eight acquisitions is probably what you can see from us going forward. And and you, you mentioned a little bit, if we talk about prices for acquisitions, well, two questions here, really, two follow-ups. Uh, if we talk about prices for acquisitions, have you seen them move at all? You alluded to that a little bit, uh, but, but have prices been stable or have they been falling? And in terms of competition for acquisitions and, and maybe the state of the companies that, that in, in the market, does it make it easier to make them or, or is it kind of the same status quo? I, I I think the uh, it, it, I think the market has been good in terms of making acquisitions. I, I think looking at the beginning of 2022, I, th- I think we saw it was very much of a seller's market, while now it's more of a buyer's market. So we have we have seen prices come down maybe from yeah we we usually work in the range of four to eight times EBIT. And and uh, uh, and it's 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 it was basically at the high very high end of that range in the beginning, while it's more in the middle of that range now. So it's, uh, it's so I, 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 and we see that that has, that has happened, and I think that's uh, and and we also feel that the the sort of supply of different companies have have uh, increased a bit here uh, during the year, and I think maybe. Mm-hmm. We we see that when when entrepreneurs, if they they if they have the intention of selling their company in the next three years or so, maybe they think that this is a good time rather than to wait a year or two. Yeah, yeah, and and if we move on on the same topic, we talk about geographies. Uh, so we we know that you did your first UK acquisition this quarter, right? Um, and you want to increase the geographical. Uh, geographical area where you're making acquisitions. What are your thoughts about that and what regions are you focusing on, etc.? And also in terms of sizes, does it also mean that we know, for instance, on the continent in Germany, for instance, targets are often a bit bigger? Do you see the same kind of thing? We, we see a lot of, when we're looking into it uh, more deeply, we, we see a lot of similarities in countries like the UK or in Germany. So we and we have the ambition, uh, as we see that that uh, for for some period at least uh, the mo- the market in the Nordics was was uh, tightened up and being more more uh, slightly more competitive, uh, and therefore we felt that it was a good uh, idea to 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 broaden ourselves uh, geographically, and we have hired a, a person that is working for us now in the UK, and and he he concluded his first deal here during the summer, and I, th- I think that's a good ambition where we would like to go. And of course, uh, just these days, the 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 UK market is uh, 
more uncertain than ever. So maybe we, yeah, le, le, we, we will deal with that along the way here. But uh, of course, we, we believe that long term UK will be a market for us. And we also believe that mid Europe uh, with, with Germany and, and Holland and Belgium and, and those markets will also be part of our geographical scope more to a to, to, to larger extent than it is today. Okay, okay. And it's a similar size of targets you're looking at on the content in the UK as it is in the yeah. Nordics. Yeah, right. We 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 won't do the very small ones. I think uh, in, in in those markets, we 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 need a little bit more size. But I think that an outsider's perspective, I don't think you will see much of a change. Maybe slightly bigger than than we've seen in the, in the Nordics. Okay. Okay. Average. Yeah. Okay. And if we move, and, if... and, and uh, yeah, to add to that, maybe maybe it's also. An, uh, I mean, we will also look at add-on acquisitions. So, for mm -hmm. instance, we made an add-on acquisition here a year ago in 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 the UK when it, we talk about Radanova, and that company was very really very small. But then it's an add-on, and that that's uh, that is a sort of a separate thing with sort of making more of new platform acquisitions. But you said you have you have hired uh, you've hired a person in in responsible for this in in the UK and and you don't have the similar type in you don't have the similar in Germany for instance it's in the no, UK you've started just just yet we don't but but uh, I I think we have some feet on the ground in terms of our of our of our sort of MDs of the company so they have that on their agenda as well but but in order to really put focus on it then we then I believe that we need some feet on the ground in terms of some some more of MA someone with more of MA background to, to mm -hmm. really put emphasis on it and that we've done in the UK but uh, but uh, yeah the, the, the Germany still remains there okay okay and if we move down a little bit and change tack again we, we move down the PL and look at the margin so the margin continues to expand and I think this is the best second quarter that you've ever seen slightly lower than Q1 but there's also seasonality etc so it, it's very good quarter margin wise what's what's the driver behind the margin increase uh... I th I think that we we have been pushing margins quite a lot in some of our companies. Uh, we we felt that uh, in in the COVID and through the long lead times and also the shortages and and price inflation, I think we've seen uh, sort of our cost prices or our or our prices of our of our sort of uh, purchases has gone up. Therefore, we have been pushing quite a lot to to get them to uh, compensate fully. And, and that has been pushing the margins to a very good level. Top of that, we've also then increased the margins through the acquisitions we made. So the acquisition has been margin uh, has improved our margins slightly. And it's not like, uh, but 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 the intention we have is to to over a business cycle to be well about fifteen percent, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we've said in our financial sort of targets. But but uh, given now that we've had it for a long time at the sixteen or sixteen point five now, then then uh, I mean we might reconsider that. But but uh, th that we haven't decided. Let's see what happens here in the in the year or two to come to see whether we can keep it at very good levels. But uh, I think the. The margins are important to us. That is that is providing profits for us, and that is providing cash flows for us. That is providing more more room for acquisitions along the way. So margins and profitability are very important to us. Um, so and and also you were talking a little bit about about component shortage and and long lead times, uh, and just curious to hear if you're seeing any easing on that front. Yeah, we we have seen some more of more of I would call it stabilization rather than than easing. Um, but but in some instances we've seen some easing as well. But but from our our electronics guys, the one we're, we're working with lead times and suppliers in Far East Asia, then the, then the lead times are still very very long. They they are nor in the normal circumstances they usually work with six to twelve weeks as lead times. But mm -hmm. currently, it's plus 52 weeks. And and when they say plus 52 weeks, they don't even get to sort of a, a, a they don't give a, even get a, a delivery time. Uh, oh. So, so they will delivery date that that and that has been the case for for a year and a half, really, uh, that has been plus 52 weeks for some components. OK, uh, but but uh, but it, and, and it's it's stabilizing and improving in some areas. But so it, it's basically I think we have peaked. But it it's far from far from the levels it used to be. 
Okay, okay, but still a peak, so we're kind of through the worst, but it's still bad. Yeah, I would expect that, yes. Okay, and then coming back to the margin, uh, what I wanted to ask was, if I look at the single subsidiaries, I mean, there's always more to do in the margin, but do we still have have subsidiaries which are which are performing below, so to speak, where, where you're still working to, to raise it to kind of a, a good level? Yeah, well, we uh, having 70 subsidiaries or 70 profit centers, we will always have we will always have a number that are below below the mean, right? <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, that, that's the that, that's the Handelsbanker way of thinking. It everyone should be above <laughs> the mean, but but uh, and and, uh, and and of course we do have that, and and we also have someone in the bottom of the list. But I think the the bottom of the list is very short. Uh, we we are looking at some. We are always looking at the the return on sales, and currently I think we have three or maybe four units that are below three percent. And that okay. means that we still have a, a few sort of uh, companies to work with. I think a couple of them are are improving, uh, but but still we have we always have something that is in in, in that in that end, and uh, we we will always sort of work with keeping it a minimum and, and fix those problems we have there. And but but uh, we will always have something there I, that it comes with the the business we run. Okay, okay. And in terms of pricing, um, I mean, you've raised prices to compensate for higher raw materials, etc. You've been doing it quite successfully, I mean, given the margins and given the higher cost base on the other end. Uh, where are you now in terms of pricing? Is it, is it, are you done or are you seeing more price increases coming through? Yeah, it used to be only price increases. Now it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's improving in some areas. I still have more to do in some areas, but it's more balanced. So it's uh, we also see some raw materials prices coming down. Even I mean, we are metal based, and we see that some metals are coming down price wise, uh, and it's also affected quite a lot with the, with the currency effects. So it's uh, mm-hmm. so it's 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 a it's a really mixed picture. I think we have been good at driving prices. We see that in our sales margin. Um, which is which is slightly different from the gross margin that we have been better at improving margins in the last year half year or so. So I think we we are coming to an end with sort of the intense price work we've been doing, and 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 bringing margins back to where they used to be before the yeah a couple of years back. Uh, in, in instances, we have a couple of companies that are still not there, and and I highlighted in the report that it's uh, mainly within the tech sector division where we see that a couple of companies there. So it's it's uh, th- that we need to fix. But otherwise, I think we are are through through most of it. I would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and finally, maybe maybe talk about your your uh, your log crunch towards one billion. Um, where you are moving quite rapidly. I mean, you set it 18 months ago, right? Uh, and you were at kind of 500 level then, and you're kind of 850 level now after only only 18 months. Uh, and at the same time, you still have acquisitions rolling over and then coming into the numbers. So you, you, you're you almost there if you would add these. Uh, maybe a little, a couple of thoughts about that, what should we should expect. Should we expect the, you to raise them or is it too early to say some color? We, we think it's, it's, it's been a great challenge. Um, I think we in the management team and me myself have been working with Lagerkrans now for 17 years almost. So I think a year back we needed some new energy in the whole situation, a new platform to work from, and and that we decided to do then with with formulating the the, the ambition of Lagerkrans towards the one billion, and, and that we've been working with. We also then decided to reorganize the organize, reorganize the, the companies and and setting really clear ambitions when it comes to what sectors and what 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 sort of trends we would like to work with and benefit from. And and that was around sustainability and also sort of sectors, customer segments where we see some underlying growth. And I think that push by pushing that, we have also highlighted where we would like to go, and also pushing that we would like to see better organic growth from our companies, which we've also seen here in the last year or so. So I think it's great to conclude here now that we we are at the eight eight fifty now, and and we are sort of moving towards. So you see the the trend line is it's upwards. 
then of course we will see what happens if if we see a, a, a severe downturn or things really happening. But I think the ambition will still be there, and 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 we we will work to, to get there. And once we are there, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, that we will find another goal. And and then long term in these type of companies, it's always been that we should double our profits every five years. So mm-hmm. I I I feel that uh, that once we're at the one billion, it will probably uh, we will probably have a new goal of two billion in in, in the next five years. It should be fifteen percent per year, and that's that's we've been work the way we've been working in these type of companies in the ni- since the nineteen eighties, and and we continue to do that. So it's a uh, it's a way of setting targets. It's a way of sort of uh, creating enthusiasm and 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 growth ambitions and 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 uh, keeping everyone focused. And uh, that's that's been working for us and continue to do so okay so if i try to sum up a bit i mean you had a very good quarter uh strong markets you're not seeing much of a downturn anywhere really it's quite broad uh and but was was it to happen you're ready for it and in terms of the margin you continue to expand there's more to do but we should maybe not expect any strides but there's definitely more to do uh, and then when it comes to the when it comes to the the target the 1 billion i mean you're you're moving fast towards it and we'll have to see where when it comes to new targets but you you're definitely getting there thank you very much for coming and talk to us yeah thank you for having me okay thank you